Uh, Brother Rick, when you were uh, well, singing the song till the storm passes by, I couldn't help but think of, uh, of Stephen, who's in a storm. He wasn't, he was not in any way, shape, or form, according to what I could read, worried about that storm. Because he knew where he stood, and he knew where he was getting ready to stand. Amen. And that was in the palm of Christ's hand. Amen. And I'll tell you why. If you don't believe me, it's over to Acts chapter 7, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, Amen. you don't really need to know anything else. He, being full of the Holy Ghost, Amen. looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory Amen. of God. And one day, Brother Rick, we're going to look up, and might is sooner than later, and we're going to see the glory of God. And we're going to see all these things, Brother Tim, that you've been preaching about. And that we've been preaching about, and Brother Rick, that we've been singing about, we're going to see all those things come to fruition. Amen. He says, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Amen. That's what you said this morning. You said that's where he was, standing up. That's what the Bible says, too. Amen standing on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then he cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. All we got to do is turn the page and we see Saul become Paul. Amen. So we see Saul the persecutor become Paul the preacher. But in verse 59, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down, and this is what kind of spirit he had. And he cried, cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So he went to be with Christ. So one day, Brother Rick, we're going to be with Christ. Amen. All right, Misty, so you'll do this when it gets about five minutes to seven. <laughs> well, I don't see that up here. Unless you, that trap door really does work. I don't know. You just pull it if you need to there, Brother Rick. Uh, turn in your Bibles, if you would, uh, to Matthew chapter 3. And tonight I'm going to preach to you for just a few minutes. It'll be just a few minutes. About limiting God. That's two words, but. Limiting God. And the way you limit God is through spiritual growth. And you say, well, how do we limit God through spiritual growth? Well, the lack thereof. That's how you limit God. Amen. It's the lack of your spiritual growth. Amen. Well, it's not your spiritual growth that limits God. It's the lack of opportunity that you give God to work in your life. So let's go, I, and, I, and I apologize, it's Matthew chapter 18, verses 2 and 3. Matthew 18, 2 and 3, and I'll read this. You, you can turn there if you like. Uh, but this will be the jest and, and, uh, of the message. And Jesus called a little child unto him. We'll back up to verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And in verse 2, Jesus called unto him a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, and that means born again, 
and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come to your house, Father. I pray, Lord God, that I would say all things that you would have me to say. I pray, Lord God, that I would say absolutely nothing that you would have me not to say. I pray, Lord God, that if there be any lost soul in the house tonight, they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I love you, Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So limiting God through the lack thereof of spiritual growth, the very first thing, and I preached this message some time back, so if, if there, I'll say something that I may have said in the past, then you just apply it to where it stands with you right now. Okay, so uh, the very first thing that you've got to do to grow, uh, the very first thing you've got to do is you've got to be born. Your mother's water has to break, and, and she has to bring you into this world. And uh, so from a physical standpoint, you have to be born. From a, uh, a, a spiritual standpoint, you have to be born again. Amen. And I think that the message was pretty clear this morning uh, as uh, Pastor Tim preached on John 3.16, that the way you get born again is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him. So you have to believe. And you don't have to just, you can't just believe. If you just believe there is a God, you'll die and go to hell. But you have to believe in that God. You have to trust in God. You have to trust God the Father became God the Son who left God the Holy Spirit. You have to believe that Jesus went to the cross, that he died, that he gave his life, that he shed his blood. And on the way to that cross, as he preached this morning, that he not just died, but that he suffered. Uh, he suffered, bled, and died. He suffered uh, the crucifixion. He's, and, and he knew in Matthew chapter 26, as I, pre I preached to you the last time I preached, that he had that cup and that when he was in the garden of Gethsemane and that he looked in that cup. And that when he looked in that cup, what he saw was you. Because he said, uh, Father, let this cup pass from me. And he said, but nevertheless, not my will, O God, but thine will, O Lord. He said, thine will. So he knew what was in front of him. He knew what he was getting ready to do, and he did it willingly. Nobody took Jesus' life. He gave his life up freely. He gave his life up for you that was in that cup. You know, I think sometimes we get a little sidetracked, and we, get a, uh, and we look at, at the world today, and it's, it's uh, kind of a bleak picture if we look at it through the eyes of the world. And we look at the abominations, and we look at the murders, and we look at the murder of the innocent unborn child, and we look at people out in the streets uh, protesting the, the fact of Roe versus Wade, and, and it's my choice. Well, it's not your choice. Well, what about the choice of the small child? What about the choice of the unborn child? So I don't, I don't understand, and it kind of grieves my spirit uh, until I look through the Holy Spirit as Stephen did, as we just talked about. And I understand that when Christ died for all sins, that he died for all sins. And I understand that when he died for, for all sins, that he died for the sin of the sodomite, that he died for the sin of the murderer, that he died for the sin of the unjust person. And, you know, it, it is our job, uh, once we become born again, to grow enough spiritually as we become a Christian to take that message into a lost and dying world. Uh, you have to be born again. It says in John chapter 3, and I know what it says, but I'm going to go there anyway. John chapter 3. And we know that in John chapter 3 that Nicodemus was talking to Jesus and he said, in John chapter 3 verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. And he said, What? Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And we know that Nicodemus goes on and says, how can these things be? And we know that Jesus says, that which is flesh, flesh, that which is more the spirit of spirit. So we know that he talks about the physical birth, and we know that he talks about the spiritual birth. But if you want to see Jesus again, you've got to have that spiritual birth. 
You've got to be born again. You cannot grow as a child unless you become a child. So you cannot grow as a child of God unless you become a child of God. So we know that you have to be saved. We know that you have to realize that you're a sinner. You know, I, I, uh, right out here in this parking lot over there where I'm parked tonight, I heard a man get on the radio and say, uh, and he was quoting out of the Bible. This is Matthew chapter 3. I'll go ahead and turn there. You don't have to. And I'll read you what the Bible says, and I'll read you what he said. He is a well-known uh, well evangelist, well-known pastor, and this is what he said. So I had to look it up because I knew it didn't say that. in Matthew chapter 3, brother. And I'll have to find it, so you just have to be patient. But anyway, I'll, I'll tell you what, for the sake of time, he said in Matthew chapter 3 that it said uh, for you to repent of your sins. He said that's what it said in Matthew chapter 2, and actually the Bible says repent ye. Y-E, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's in Matthew 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, whatever. Uh, but he quoted it on the radio as repent of your sins. So uh, we've, we've talked about this. You know that. You know that uh, you would be in a lot of trouble if you had to repent of your sins for salvation. Yeah. Because if you had to do that, then, well, again, what happens if you forget one? Uh, so we know that the Bible says in John chapter 3 to believe. We know that the Bible says in the verse 17th verse, it says it's through Jesus, through Christ. And we know in the 18th verse that it says that he, believeth on, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed upon the only begotten Son of God. We know that the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't say whosoever repents of all his sins. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, uh, and by the way, this man was quoting if you're interested in, and I, so I didn't even pay any attention until he said repent of your sins. I think it was a new and living something translation. And, and he even said, if you've got this translation, or you've got that translation, so... According to him, everybody in his congregation was confused. See, if they didn't have his translation or his translation or that translation. So I'm going to stick with the King James Bible. Amen. And I'm, I've been in that all my life. I plan on staying there until I see Jesus. I believe it's the whole inspired word of God. I believe uh, every single word that it says, it is. Uh, so in order to experience growth, you've you got to be a child of God. Once you become a child of God, then you become a Christian. Once you become a Christian uh, and you're a child of God, then as in your physical life and as in when you were born physically and you, was, you, know, uh, you, you started to, to eat and, or from, you got your mother's milk or you got a, she didn't want to do that, so you got a bottle or you went to the store and you got some formula which you can't do anymore I guess is what they say uh, so and I've got grandchildren so that I guess that is important but uh, but then you know you you just I mean you're not sitting you're not going home tonight and, and get your bottle out of the refrigerator and start sucking on it I hope unless you are a child a very young infant child. But sadly enough, from a spiritual standpoint, we have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of people that are still sucking on their body. They've never even graduated to the point of the yucky st stuff they put in that jar. <laughs> ah, made me want to vomit. Yeah. My wife had to feed our children out and out. I, and then you go to the mashed potatoes, I think, is the next graduating step. Yeah. And then you mash them potatoes up because you don't want to buy that baby food no more, right? So, and then the carrots, and then you, you, you mash them up. And you, so they gradually graduate, and then they come off of that. Why? Because they're growing. Right? 
And the only way that they can grow is to be fed. And the only way that you can grow is to feed yourself out of the Word of God. That's the only way you're going to grow. You can sit up here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. You can come on soul winning visitation. You can do whatever that you feel like that it's helping you grow. And those things will help you grow. But until you get to the sear meat of the word, then you're always going to be in the milk of it. Right. Um, so you need to grow spiritually just like you do physically. So I'm going to give you two or, th two or three things that the Lord's given me, and then we will uh, we'll go to the house. I, I do want to say this. I, I, I've been wanting to uh, ask Brother Ted to let me... Uh, and, and I still want to do this, Brother Tim, uh, but, uh, so, yeah, or Brother Rick or whoever. Uh, but do, we, do we have a board back there that has missionary letters? Okay. Well, I'm going to start posting these missionary letters that are sent to me, okay, from Team China, from Taiwan, from Dalian, and uh, Brother Wilkerson that preached here Wednesday night. He'll, I told him to send the prayer letters to here or to send them to me at the very least, and, and I would transfer them to here. But when you get these prayer letters, I think my wife will testify that I take these prayer letters out, and I read them one by one. And I, read every, I try to read every single word that's on these prayer letters so that I know and so that I am abreast of the things, and you should too, that your money is going to. Okay, so that's one thing. But the main thing is, is so that you can pray for these missionaries. Amen. It's, you know, your money, it, you don't pay your life bill with that money, and neither do they. So there's a certain amount of, of things that money plays into it. But I especially want to read you from this young man. His name is Adam. His wife's name is Ashley and Anna Waltz, W-A-L-Z. So this is what growing is all about and this is what uh, eating that spiritual food will help you to do okay but I want you to listen closely as I read this and you know it's funny the letter says growing in Christ I didn't even know that time just now I read it it says I mean I've read the letter but I didn't make the connection with the sermon but it says growing in Christ you said God don't make no mistakes right so it says growing in Christ from Adam, Ashley, and Anna Waltz. Following his baptism, Vision, so Vision is his English name, okay? Now, so back up just a little bit. Let's go to John and Ashley Waltz in Taiwan. And Adam, Ashley, and Anna Waltz are also church planting missionaries in Taiwan. And it says, Vision is the English name of this young man being baptized, and it shows a picture of him being baptized. By my nephew, who surrendered his life to go to Taiwan, him and his wife, Adam Walls. Okay? So Vision is the one that just got saved. Right? Vision is the one that just got baptized. Vision is the Taiwanese. Adam is the missionary. Now, now that I got you to that point, following his baptism, this is a, a month or so later, following his baptism, Vision has begun serving, <laughs> has begun serving at the Second Birth Baptist Church. My Uncle John, that's who I just read you from, my Uncle John has given Vision the opportunity to share a Bible verse each Sunday. He has been growing in his love for Jesus. Amen. This guy just got saved. He got off the mashed potatoes and carrots. He went straight to the meat, brother. He went straight to the meat. He has been growing in his love for Jesus Christ and serving him. Each week he comes with questions. So he has a hunger they have a hunger we don't have. Yeah. If we just be blunt, right? He has a hunger that most of us just don't have. We don't have a Q&A question. Maybe we should, <laughs> you know? Maybe we should have a Q&A question for Luke Hobart. Who knows? 
But we need to constantly be thinking of a way that we can grow as a church, as individuals at a church. He's been growing. Each week he comes with questions from what he has been reading in God's Word and has been showing a clear desire to share the gospel with his family and friends. Recently, we invited visit and his friends to our house for dinner. They, too, have seen a change. <laughs> a change, right? You know what that is? That's fruit. That's what the Bible talks about, fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. They, too, have seen a change in their friend vision. He don't want to go to the same places he used to go to with his friends. He doesn't enjoy doing the old stuff that he used to do with his Amen. friends. He wants to get his friends and introduce them to who he just met. Amen. Growth. Spiritual growth. And we're asking him, while sitting at the table, I overheard Vision telling his friend how Jesus is better and why they should believe in him too. It's been very sweet to see the change Christ has made in vision. That's what spiritual growth is all about, right? So all these letters are available. All these prayer letters are available. You can read. I'll, I'll just give my brother Tim and brother Rick whatever, and, and we can come up with a plan to, to share those once a month or whatever brother Tim sees fit. Uh, so a couple of things that, that you could do that will help you get off of the baby food and into the meat. Uh, one of the first things you need to do, as far as a Christian, is you need to study. Amen. You need to develop good study habits. We know, and the commonly used verse is 2 Timothy 2.15. It says, study to show itself through the workman unto God, and he is not to be ashamed. Me and my wife had a conversation Friday night about being ashamed or needing not to be ashamed. The way you need not to be ashamed is you need to know. The way you know is grow. The way you grow is to study. Study to show thyself approved. So you break that verse down. And don't just read it. Don't read any verse. Just read over I thought it was amazing, John 3, 6, how many of you thought it was amazing how many things John 3, 16 says? So it was, it was wonderful, the sermon this morning, brother. But so you study, the, so you break that verse down and you study that verse out. And you study to show yourself approved. A workman. Unto who? Unto God. Not to, not, you're not trying to impress Brother Tim. You're not trying to impress the church. You're studying to make yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. So that you, what if somebody asks you a question? Well, let me, let me give you some advice. Even if you don't know, don't try to tell them what you don't know. Okay? Just say, I don't know. Let me call our pastor. He'll help us with this. Let me call our brother Caleb. He'll help us with this. I just heard him preach on this the other day. So, Study to show thyself approved a workman unto God that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? So develop good study habits. As you develop good study habits, once you study the word of God, you'll learn how to sacrifice for God. Amen. So you need to sacrifice for God. Matthew 6, 19 and 20 says, Lay not up yourselves treasures, on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Right. But lay up your treasures in heaven. This is laying up your treasures in heaven. And it's not just here. It's not just Taiwan. It's right out there. Right. It's right out them doors. It's right over right over here on uh, Oakdale or, right. or wherever you may be. Where, wherever you are, that's where you're in Jerusalem. So. Amen. But lay up your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where therein, and where thieves do not break through and steal. So 
when you set your priorities and when you're when you're wanting to know what to do for Christ, just simply ask him because he says you have not because you ask not. He says not and it shall be opened. Right? Amen. So go to God, ask him. Sacrifice what you do have for the work of God, for the work of the Lord. And there's nothing wrong with going to a Tennessee ball game. If there is, I'm in a lot of trouble. There's nothing wrong with going to a North Carolina basketball game. I'm in a whole lot of trouble if there is. So you can have enjoyment in your life. Just don't make it a priority. Don't make it your God. Make God your God. And I'll, I'll be real honest with you. If you spend more time with God, you'll spend less time with other stuff. Okay? And I love salt water. I love it. I'm probably going to go there next month. It won't be when I plan, Brother Rick. <laughs> uh, uh, so about 30 dots. We'll get a verse of July 22nd. <laughs> so we will reschedule that. Yeah, for August 22nd. Well, it would be cheaper in August anyway, right? <laughs> so you saved me a lot of money, Brother Rick. <laughs> and that's exactly what I was thinking. Hmm. <laughs> Where are we going, uh, BBS? <laughs> Matthew 6, 33 says, <laughs> yeah. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek ye first. Now listen, if you take the whole verse in its context, what does it tell you to do first? It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God Amen. and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto thee. So if you back up, and so we'll go back to Matthew, and we'll go back to chapter 6, and we'll look over here, we'll turn the page, and we'll find 33, and then we'll back it on up to 25. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life. That's what, that's what the Bible says. It's not it's what the Bible says. Take no thought for your life. For what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat, the body, than raiment. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking what thought? This is this is a good verse right here. But what? You really can't do anything. You really should be. You should be. And you really don't know how much you are. A hundred percent dependent upon God. Which of which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature? And why take ye for the raiment, consider the lilies of the field, and how they grow, and toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, that today is, and tomorrow is, cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And that's what it really all comes down to, is your faith. You have to have faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, take no thought saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? For with what shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So when you take care of God's business, you will take care of your business. When, when you just go out and you do what the Lord wants you to do and you call upon his name and you seek his will and you seek his face and you earnestly get on your knees and, and you pray and you seek God, what would you have me to do in this situation? There's no way he can't answer you because he said he would. He said right over here in the seventh chapter, which is the next chapter up and the seventh verse over, Ask it, it shall be given you. Seek it, you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. That's what I just told you, but I told you that out of the Word of God because that's what the Word of God says. So if you'll seek the Word of God, if you'll sacrifice unto God, if you'll seek Him first, 
then you'll begin to grow. The second thing you need to do is separate yourself unto God. So you need to sacrifice for God, separate unto God. When you separate unto God, that means taking yourself away from the places vision took himself away from, his friends and the ungodly things that they were doing. And he would, ended up being an influence to them, not by them. You just tell my son, I don't know about you hanging out with this particular person. Well, Dad, I'm going to be a witness to him. Or he's going to be a witness to you. He's going to be an influence to you. So watch out with the company that you keep. And watch out for little bitty cracks in the crevice. Because they lead to big old destruction. Right? It starts out right here. I, I was going to do a demonstration with my wife. I didn't even tell her nothing about it. And I started thinking about it. No, I better not do that. She might not want to do that. But I was going to have her come up here. I just stand right here and then sit and then have her move to the next row. And then have her move three rows back. And then have her move back to where Brother Caleb and Miss Courtney is. And then just have her just finally just have her go out and shut the door. Because that's what that right there turns into. One missed service turns into two missed services, turns into a midweek missed service, turns into, well, I don't feel like studying now. Well, I don't feel like reading my Bible tonight. Well, golly, I'm tired. I just, I'll pick that up tomorrow, and then you're nowhere to be found. So you determine all that. Right? It is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ that determines your personal growth. So you have to separate yourself from the things that are keeping you from God. And I can't help but think of Sister Courtney. She, she, she made a statement. She took a stand and she separated herself. Or what that leads to, I don't have a clue. And I'm not sure she does. But she didn't ask, well, God, where's this going to lead to? She said, this ain't right. I'm going to take a stand. She did. It'll all lead to, it, it was it say? It says, all things work together for good. Hey, you know, we had a little message I preached a while back. All, all things work together for good for them, Sister Courtney, that love God and are called according to his purpose. What it says right there, Romans up there in there, 8 and 28, you can look it up for yourself. Separation unto God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17, Be ye not, now listen, now this is important, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship? It doesn't say don't witness to unbelievers. It does not say don't associate with them in terms of inviting them to church, telling them about Jesus, being nice, being kind, being compassionate. I think Christ was all those things. But it doesn't say you're to go and do what they do. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communication hath light with darkness? Every time I read that, Brother Tim, I think about, or Brother Dylan, I think about where I used to be. So I, I didn't grow up. I had a big lapse, big lapse, when I was 28 years old. From the time I got saved, Shortly thereafter, I was out of church. Now, I got saved at a very young age. I didn't have a choice on whether I was going to church or not. So I was taken out of church. Oh, you're not, you can't grow out. <laughs> I believe that we don't talk about this, but you can't grow out there. You grow in here. You grow in the house. You don't grow outside of it. If you grow outside the house, you're going to grow as the world grows. If you're in the world, you're going to do what the world does. If you're in the world, you're going to seek the things the world seeks that it's not a godly thing. And that step becomes larger and longer and longer and longer. And it gets real hard to come back in. That's just flesh. It just gets harder and harder. You start to feel that remorse and, 
and you start to feel like, well, I can't go back. Look what I've done. Look what I've done. That's why 1 John 1, 8 9 is in the Bible. That's when you repent of your sins. Not for salvation. After salvation. And he says if you do, if you're faithful and just to ask forgiveness of your sins, he's going to be faithful and just to cleanse you of your sins or to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. All. So, when you come and you get on your knees and you repent of your sins, as a believer, he's going to forgive you your sins. What the Bible says, 1 John 1, 8 and 9. So don't watch the crowd that you hang around with. Uh, sacrifice for God, separate unto God. And when it says, what I, well, I put down here, separate unto God, I'm specifically separate yourself unto God. Stay away from the ungodly. Stay with the godly. Separate yourself from the ungodly. Seek the godly. Seek the house of God. And the only place you go find them is the house of God. Uh, let's go to verse 15. And what concord has Christ with Baal? This is what the Bible says. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? A bunch of idols over here. A bunch of Baals over here. A bunch of Buddhas over here. For ye, that's you, are the temple of the living God as a believer. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God as they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and separate, saith the Lord. That's not something I made up. It says separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The Bible says, I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. That's what it says, saith the Lord Almighty. So, just if you want spiritual growth in your life, sacrifice a little bit, separate a little bit. And as I said the last time I preached this, if you just do those two things and surround yourself with godly people, and the only way you can surround yourself with godly people is the godly people in the house of God, then if you do that, and if you, if you want that, if that happens, then you will experience spiritual growth, but also with your church. Because your church can't experience spiritual growth unless you, as a body of believers, experience spiritual growth. Amen. I'll close with this. The Bible says, and you know what it says, but I'll tell you what it says in concern of the house of God and in concerning spiritual growth as a church. We talk about spiritual growth as a child. We talk about spiritual growth as a Christian. Now we talk about spiritual growth as a church. Hebrews 10, 25. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together so much more as you, uh, and so much as that manner of some is, but exhorting one another, exhorting, lifting up one another, and so much more as you see that day approaching. So if you want to grow and you want your church to grow, if you want your church to grow, then you have to grow. Uh, the Bible says the very last thing I'm going to tell you is this is what the Bible says 1 Corinthians 3, 5-9 through 9 says who then is Paul who then is Apollos but ministers by whom you believed even as the Lord even as the Lord gave to every man I have planted in Apollos water but God gave the increase. Amen. Then neither is he that planted, neither, neither is he that plants anything, neither he that watereth, 
but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. That's your spiritual growth. You determine your reward. And what you are going to lay at the feet of Jesus. For we are all labor, laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Amen. So if you're a child of God and you profess to be a Christian and you're in the house of God, which is the church of God, and you want it to grow, then you have to go to the temple. Amen.